Welcome everyone to part one of building the DreamWatch collection. Welcome everyone, my name is AB, I run the Watch Collection Shire Productions, and in today's episode, we're going to be building the Dream Watch Collection. Now, I've been getting a lot of comments like this, basically a lot of people saying that they've kind of been feeling antsy at home, they're feeling a little bit bored, or, you know, they're having cabin fever, so I decided to start this series called Building the Dream Watch Collection. Now, I know a lot of people have different definitions for the Dream Watch Collection, this is just a little bit of fun. And this is going to be a five part series with different themes. Today's theme is the guy who wants smaller watches, the guy who has smaller wrists. We're just going to call this theme the traditionalist. We're going to be building a three watch collection surrounding an everyday piece, a dress piece and an enthusiast piece. So guys, enjoy this first episode. So back in 83, Jean-Claude Biver and his friend Jacques Piguet bought the rights back to the Blopin name. Blopin only had one watch at the time and Jean-Claude Biver had to think outside of the box to make a statement in Basel world. While other brands were showcasing hundreds of watches, Blopin could show up to the table with only one watch. So they decided to show up, well, with nothing at all. The result? Everybody that year was talking about Blopin and asking one another if they've even seen the watch and what was going on. The fact that Blopin was the talking point in Basel world means though it was a little bit unorthodox, the marketing was absolutely genius. Now to share with you my choice, we have to fast forward to today and look at the modern Bathis Gaff. But this one has a little bit of a twist for those who want smaller watches, or the traditionalist. This piece comes with a 38mm case with approximately 10mm thickness as opposed to the previous 43mm and 13mm thickness. The watch also has a beautiful blue dial which might confuse many why I'm going with a blue as an everyday choice. Though blue isn't as versatile as a simple black or a white dial for example, blue goes with pretty much everything you wear. Oh, and you want to know the best part? This watch has the caliber 1150, which has approximately 100 hours of power reserve, which is more than enough for daily use. If you're interested in this watch, I have a full review, but this is my choice for the traditionalist. This is an absolutely perfect small size diver, and I could recommend it to anyone. Now when choosing a piece for an enthusiast and also a traditionalist in the same time, there's a few things they will never let go of. One of those things, well, is to have a manual wind chronograph. Many collectors who are deep into this hobby won't even touch an automatic chronograph. Ask Ben Clymer, JK. The second thing is historical value. Need I say more when it comes to the Speedmaster? In case you forgot, it's in the name, the Omega Speedmaster First Omega in Space. Now the reference CK2998 was the first Omega to reach space. When astronaut Walter Shearer wore that watch during the Sigma 7 mission of the Mercury program in 1962. Shearer had purchased the watch for his own use, but two and a half years later, the Speedmaster would be officially certified by NASA. Now the final thing for an enthusiast, the watch has to at least look vintage if it's not going to be a vintage watch. I can't think of any watch out there that looks almost identical to its predecessor yet still manages to look like a piece from 2020. Forget going to the moon, that is impressive. Again, just kidding. So what we have for today's choice is the Omega Speedmaster First Omega in Space, which has a 39.7 millimeters. Now I know an enthusiast will say, hey, I want a 37 millimeters. But listen, dude, I'm not Disney. I can't make all your dreams come true. 39.7 millimeters is good enough, especially that you get a manual wine chronograph, you get such an iconic watch, such a stunning watch, something you could wear every single day, it's very hard for you to go wrong with the Omega Speedmaster. Now finally, my choice for the dress watch is the Glasuta Panamatic Lunar. I know what you're gonna say, it's a 40mm watch, it's quite thick. But for a traditionalist, I could probably convince you by saying this watch kinda looks like a pocket watch. The Panamatic Lunar is absolutely stunning. Now before you close out, because I know this watch looks like it should cost 20 to maybe $50,000. What if I told you one of the most beautiful watches I've ever handled, incredible finishing on the case, the dial, and an absolutely stunning caliber, well, was cheaper than a steel Submariner. Now if you've never heard of this brand, let's talk about them for a second. I'm determined to do you a favor and introduce you to Glasuta. Glasuta is a German brand based out of the city of, well, you guessed it, 
Galasuta, Germany. The same city that houses brands like Alang and Zuna, Nomos, and many other brands. It's the horological capital of Germany, and the brand produces high horology watches for relatively fair prices. And to add icing to the cake, everything is made fully in-house. Now, I would absolutely love for you guys to dig deeper into this brand. So instead of telling you the specifications of this piece and everything I love about it, I'm going to direct you towards my full review of this piece down in the link below. Make sure you check that out so you could at least learn about the brand, understand why Glasuta is probably one of my favorite brands out there. It's at least in my top five. Now, I know a traditionalist would say a dress watch should be a time only with no seconds and a slim dress watch and most importantly, under 40 millimeters. To them I say, yeah, sure, but come on, would you really be this disappointed having to look at this on your wrist? Honestly, I don't think so. But guys, hopefully you enjoyed the first episode of building the Dreamwatch collection. The next episode we're going to be surrounding the guy who wants more unique options, the guy who doesn't want to follow mainstream. So make sure you stay tuned, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that episode. And guys, let us know in the comments, what would you choose for smaller options? Let us know. And guys, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next one.